Kenneth Lee Lay was the American founder, CEO and chairman of Enron Corp, who was heavily involved in the eponymous accounting scandal that unraveled in 2001 into the largest bankruptcy ever to that date. In the wake of Enron's downfall, federal investigators discovered evidence of corporate arrogance, greed and fraud of an unprecedented level. Ken Lay, the main accused, had wiped off an unbelievable $101 billion, once again leaving an aftermath of penniless investors, broken families and thousands unemployed. Hey guys, welcome to another exciting video from our channel. In this video today, we take a look at how the Enron scandal went down and the main accused Ken Lay managing to steal an insane $101 billion. But before we get into it, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss a video from us. That said, let's take a look. In 2000, Enron Corporation under the leadership of Ken Lay was the darling of Wall Street, the largest seller of natural gas in North America, the fifth largest corporation in the United States and the nation's most innovative large company. Funnily enough, by the end of November 2001, Enron's stock price had fallen from over $90 a share to just pennies. And finally, on December the 2nd, 2001, the company filed for bankruptcy. So what actually caused this dizzying downfall of a corporate giant so abruptly? In the wake of Enron's downfall, federal investigators discovered evidence of corporate arrogance, greed and fraud on an unprecedented level. The Rise of Enron Corp. Ken Lay was born in Texas County, Missouri to Omer and Ruth Lay. Lay's father was a Baptist preacher and Lay grew up in poverty after the family's general store failed. Growing up in poverty, like all rags to riches stories, Ken Lay too had a vision. After leaving home and a string of jobs across the country, Lay had finally found himself a big idea worth pursuing. He saw great opportunities for a company that developed the skills to win a new rough and tumble deregulated natural gas industry. Later on, in 1985, as the CEO of Houston Natural Gas, during a period in which the Reagan administration was eliminating price controls on natural gas and allowing the commodity to be bought and sold freely. Ken Lay seized the opportunity to merge with Nebraska-based pipeline company InterNorth and give the newly merged company a new name, Enron. In the beginning, Enron was hugely successful. It bought large quantities of natural gas at discounted prices and then delivered it through its, through its own nationwide pipeline system to wholesale customers like power companies. As the business flourished, Enron introduced long-term contracts and future contracts into the market, allowing buyers of its gas to hedge against price fluctuations. Enron soon became the huge middleman in the natural gas industry, transforming the market, dictating prices and capturing huge profits. By 1992, Enron was the largest natural gas company in the US. Over time, however, with other companies beginning to copy Enron's innovative approaches, competition in the natural gas industry increased, leaving Enron's profits to shrink. Ken Lay, on the board of Enron, decided diversification was necessary to drive profits higher. Enron then decided to expand into a wider variety of new businesses, including energy trading, power generation, water, coal, retail electricity, metals, and broadband communication. Enron spent enormous sums to purchase electric companies in Oregon and Brazil, build a power plant in India, a paper mill in Quebec, and a water utility plant in the UK, among other investments. A masterstroke by the company. The Fall of Enron Corp. This diversification, while a masterstroke on paper, ultimately proved to be a failure. Most of these investments failed to produce the expected profits, owing to the decision to place them under the direction of existing Enron natural gas traders, rather than finding people with deeper experience in various industries. Enron's losses ballooned to well over $10 billion, according to a report in Fortune magazine. 
Now, with increasing losses and debt, rather than tell investors the truth, the real story of Enron's crumbling financial picture, Ken Lay and other executives at Enron opted to employ a series of misleading and illegal tactics to produce financial statements for the Securities and Exchange Commission that continued to show increasing profits and low debt. With almost all of Enron's profits made up and almost all of its debts hidden by fraudulent accounting, it became increasingly difficult to convince Wall Street that all was well with Enron. The doubt in the company sowed the seeds of their downfall and eventual collapse. In March 2001, Enron's stock price began to collapse following publication of the article Is Enron Overpriced? by Fortune magazine. The article argued that Enron's reports provided almost no clue as to how the company made its reported profits and had left many analysts with unanswered questions. It further demanded that the board come out with solid answers for profits generated. A month later, when quizzed by an analyst for failing to release a balance sheet with its earnings statements, one of the executives from Enron lost his cool, calling the analyst an asshole for even asking the question. With growing tensions among the investors, Enron had to be quick to address the issue, or they could be facing more serious speculations, which could prove to be fatal. Ken Lay continued to tell employees and potential investors that Enron's problems were nearly behind them and that the company had a great future. The few words from the CEO and founder could only do so much good. It was not long after when things went bad to worse. Over the next couple of months for Enron, Enron's stock price continued to slide. As one hedge fund manager stated, Enron's stock is trading under a cloud. In mid-October, Enron announced that it was restating earnings from 1997 to 2000 to correct accounting violations and talked about putting a final nail in the coffin when a few days later the SEC announced it would investigate several Enron deals to answer the questions of worried investors. What followed was a discovery of corporate greed and arrogance at unprecedented levels. The SEC investigators uncovered several fraudulent deals by top executives, resulting in firing of the whole top brass. As credit rating agencies continued to drop Enron's rating, notch by notch, Lay and other executives unloaded vast quantities of Enron stock. In the next three months, from August to October 2001, Ken Lay alone sold over 918,000 shares of Enron while insisting to others that the company was in good shape. Looking for a desperate way out, but in vain, Enron Corp finally sought bankruptcy. No sooner after the collapse of Enron began the blame game and the finger pointing, a further indication of how far corrupted things had become. The Prosecution Michael Chertoff, chief of the Justice Department's criminal division, created a special task force headed by Leslie Caldwell to investigate Enron. Caldwell filled the team with both experienced white-collar prosecutors and prosecutors with experience trying mafia cases. The investigators encountered a wall of corporate silence. Sharon Watkins, the whistleblower who first confronted Ken Lay with evidence of accounting irregularities, provided help. But Watkins was not a member of Enron's inner circle. They also needed witnesses who had the ability to help jurors understand transactions that at first seemed mind-boggling in their complexity. The length at which the top brass of Enron had gone to hide the scam was unfathomable, leaving the company out of $100 billion. Ken Lay and the top executives stole as much as they could before the ship sank. Finally, in February 2004, all the accused executives were tried in court and were convicted for several accounts of fraud. As for Lay, he pleaded not guilty and fought a lengthy trial against the prosecutors. After a series of heated arguments, the court and the jury declared that Ken Lay was in fact guilty. When asked for a comment, Lay said he was shocked by the verdict, but despite what happened today, I am still a very blessed man. However, much to everyone's surprise, Ken Lay would never serve time. 
on July the 5th, while on a week-long vacation at his Aspen home with his wife Linda, Lay got out of bed in the early morning to go to the bathroom and collapsed, the victim of a massive heart attack, three months before his scheduled sentencing. Lay left behind a legacy of shame, characterized by mismanagement and dishonesty. In 2009, a list posted on Portfolio.com ranked Lay as the third worst American CEO of all time. His actions were the catalyst for subsequent and fundamental corporate reform in regard to his standards of leadership, governance and accountability. Leaving an aftermath of grief and pain, the Enron scandal went down in history as one of the most heinous scandals by corporate America. And with that, we have come to the end of our video. If you enjoyed it, like, share and subscribe to our channel for more such exciting content from us. See you in the next video.